This is Ray Daswell here once again, all about Eastbourne. We don't only stay in Eastbourne and the little district around, we sometimes travel further afield to uh, talk to friends about the charities they're involved in, voluntary agencies and so on. And Mick Trott has very kindly come back to me. Do you realise, Mick, it was nearly or about eight months ago that we talked together, answered a few questions about living life, and so it'd be good to have a little catch up. I know it time just flies. I was saying that to my daughter the other day <coughs> about <laughs> and I said, Do you realise that was three years ago? She said oh, yeah, never. She's... She had to look in her diary to because she thought I was wrong. Well, there you go. We were chatting earlier here about the holiday break over Christmas and New Year, and just it all merges into one. Time passes so quickly. So as far as living life is concerned then, um, just one particular question to start with. In that eight months since we last chatted, what what changes in the work have you seen? Well, there's been lots for us. You know, I suppose with the pandemic and things like that has caused us many problems as it has lots of other organisations. You know, our charity has taken a knock because of very little funding but our shop in particular uh, obviously we had to close many times and we had to reduce certain services so we wasn't able to, able to supply teas and coffees and things like that so there's a big change for us in in the in the sort of raising funds side but now uh, a big even bigger one is that we've had to close our premises because we was given order to to cease our lease because the owners wanted the premises back so we actually vacated the premises on the 24th of December, one day before Christmas. <laughs> oh, goodness me. You had so much stock there. I have been into the shop a few times and a big building there in Seaside Road in Eastbourne. And I can remember it years ago as a cinema. And so you had two or three floors. Yeah, we had two floors. So we had the ground floor, which was the shop. And that was roughly about a thousand square feet of space. We then had out, out the back, which was sort of little small storerooms. But then downstairs, we had two huge rooms, which was about 1500 square feet each. And that's where we done our, all our sorting and packing of the shoe boxes, the clothing and everything else that we done throughout the shop. It was all done downstairs. So it's a brilliant space for us, but we knew it was going to come to an end at one time. And, and it's just a, a big, huge problem for us now. So what have you been able to do with all the stock? So what we've done was I put an appeal out to see if anybody could rent us some premises. And we were quite willing to pay, but like any other charity, we're limited to what funds we have. So a friend see the post that I put on Facebook and um, she immediately said, look, I've got an empty barn, come and use it. So we took all our stuff over to a barn in Seaford. And wow. that's where we've got all our, our goods and our furniture stored at the moment. So you, having moved to Seaford then, you'll be able to carry on the work as you have been over the last number of years? No, we can't because we, we can't actually move to, to Seaford and do the work because it's just a storage space. What, what we need is a premises that we can continue. Like you say, we need to, our work starts, it ends in de December, Christmas for our one day break. We start straight away again. Uh, it, so in theory, we should now be packing shoe boxes, believe it or not, but we're not because we don't have the space to do it. We used to do it in our house here. We used to use one of our spare rooms, but our spare room has now been taken up because we had to have a, an annex built for our mother-in-law and, and my sister-in-law who's disabled. So that's taken that space up. So we desperately need space. So running a charity of one sort or another is not all that straightforward, but have you, you managed to do some traveling in the last few months? Yeah, yeah, we went out, we took the, the shoe boxes out. We actually, this time, because we were forced with many problems at borders because of uh, being in Brexit now, um, we decided to get a haulier from Croatia. As they came over, we loaded our boxes on the 26th of November onto the lorries. They went out and they was dropped off to our buildings in the Red Cross 
in Slatina and they were waiting for there for when we got out on the 12th of December. But straight away, we, we arrived in, in Slatina, I think about seven, eight o'clock at night. And we were straight into unpacking those boxes. And it went on for another two days unpacking the boxes. So how many boxes did you have then? In total, 1,530. It, it was brilliant. Absolutely excellent. And that's mainly because of our volunteers and the way they work. They're tremendous workers, you know. And, and really, I, I've got to say, I don't want to let them stop. So I don't want them to, to become sort of lazy. So that's why I need new premises to get them going. <laughs> so I guess as far as premises is concerned and a, a place to collect and do all the packing and so on, Eastbourne would be best for you or somewhere not too far away because it's where home is for you and the family. Well, you know what, we, we're we not choosers. We, we do like to, we're an Eastbourne charity. We, we like to think that Eastbourne will support us in what we do because don't forget, it's not all about overseas our work. What we try to do and what we aim to do, and this is my vision, I really want to be able to get a place big enough so that we can include the community. That means those with mental health issues, the disabled, anybody that wants to come along, come together as a community to actually work and support other people that have got less than them. It's what we're trying to achieve, bringing people together. We, we sort of like to, to build bridges with what we do. And we want to bring all those people together to say, look, we are here, we can help each other, and this is how we're going to do it. So that's my vision, is to get a place big enough that we can do that. But obviously, hopefully in Eastbourne, if not, we'll travel. You know, we, we can't choose where we go. If, if someone says, look, I've got this warehouse, 2,000 square feet, it's over in Seaford, or it's over in New Haven, is it any good to you? Yes. I don't say no, absolutely, I can understand that. Okay, you've been using a former cinema premises. I know of a cinema in town, which had been operating for almost 100 years. I used to go there to see films when I was a boy. How about that? What, the cinema where we, where we was, or? No, 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 uh, the, the old... Yeah, do you know what, that would be fantastic, but do you know what, people just don't want to let you have their premises. I, I don't know what, do you know, there are so many premises. I went out a couple of days ago, touring around Eastbourne to see what, what was empty, what we could look for. And do you know what, there's so many empty properties available, but to get the owners to, to allow you to, to use them long enough to do your work is an almost impossibility. And we could be writing letters asking every single day which we do write letters to different companies today you know we're not asking everything for free we'll even try to pay something towards whatever it is but at the end of the day you know most of the companies that own these big premises they still have to pay rates and if they pass that building on to us then they don't have to pay those rates because we as a charity uh, are liable for the rates if we move in we then get 80% free of the rates. And then the other 20% is we, we can apply to the council to ask them to, to dismiss that, which most of the times they do. But uh, that's, that's how it goes with empty premises. For sure. So that's the issue at the moment. Uh, I guess I'm not too surprised because we, we talked about this before, that it was on the horizon and now it's, it's hit you. So I'm hoping that even as a result of our discussion today, that there might be somebody listening in who would have a sympathetic ear and perhaps would get in touch with you in due course. We'll come to that again uh, towards the end, but just tell us more about Croatia, your contact with the Red Cross. Are there individuals there who are particularly supportive of what you do and don't want it to end? Oh, absolutely. We are very well known throughout the Slavonia region. And that's quite a big region. And uh, especially Slatina, because that's where we're based. That's where we work out from uh, because of the Red Cross buildings. But, you know, we've won, our charity has won many certificates from the government over there, from the local councils, from the mayor. Even only two years ago, we was given a, a certificate from the mayor for 
playing music. We took some worship music out and played live live bands out there. Mm -hmm. So we do lots of, uh, of sorts of things. And it's not only Christmas, you know, throughout Easter and places like that, we will go out and we will set up workshops for the people. So it's about helping them to understand how they can help themselves. We buy chickens for uh, a whole community in, in villages where they can actually help themselves by letting those chickens grow to, a, to an age where they can produce eggs and stuff like that. And they can barter with that. And it's all about them getting off their backsides and doing, you know, a bit as well. And they do. They're not shy of that. So that's why I'm fond of, of working in and around Croatia because they're not lazy people. I'm not saying other, others are, but that, that's what I've, I've come to find uh, since working there. So uh, there are many people, the schools out there would be, I mean, there, there's no talk of me stopping. I'm not, I, I will do everything in my power to continue what I'm doing. You know, as God gives me the breath to breathe, then I shall continue. It's in God's hands, you know, and, and we have to pray that. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I guess you're meeting uh, so many people through the distribution of the boxes. Have you um, a story or two you could share how people have been encouraged and blessed as a result of your generosity? Yeah, there's there's been loads. I mean, there's been real happy moments. There's been sad moments. There's There's been one in particular, and this goes back a good 20 years. And I always remember it because a, a young girl was saying to her dad out there, I, I just wish that I could get a Barbie doll uh, for Christmas. This went on for a long time in her family, unbeknown to us. We never knew the family, but we went along to meet the family one day and we took along shoe boxes with us and we gave them a shoe box each. And as I say, this was over 20 years, maybe 25 years ago. The little girl opened her box and what was in there? A Barbie doll. And the family thought it was all planned. And I said, it, it's impossible because they're all taped. They're finished before we leave England and they're all taped until you actually open them yourselves. And it was only two years ago that we, we went to this family and this elderly gentleman started talking about how he remembers his daughter wishing for a Barbie doll. And some people came along and give them these boxes. And of course I said to him, that was me. <laughs> so, incredible times, you know, like that. But, and even to now that, I met a family just this Christmas when I went out and the family, there's four young children. Uh, there's a mum and dad and the mum has breast cancer. She's having a double mastectomy sometime this month, but her house conditions are appalling, absolutely appalling. And because of uh, the, the manager of the Red Cross Flatco, he's a good Christian guy. And he, he just, he said to me, I just feel for this person and, and God's told me that I need to deal with this. And he's raising the funds to buy a house for them uh, because oh. what, they, what they live in is a, a one room, six of them on one bed, if you can call it a bed, it's cushions on the floor. And with a mum that sits ill and like that, um, we couldn't stand by and let that happen. So we've joined in in raising the funds. And he's already got, I think, £11,000 out of 15500 that he needs. So it's things like that. You, you come to the, the happy moments and you come to play things like that where she's only in her mid-30s and she's got a whole life ahead of her with her children. So that there's a, a mixture of emotions. Whenever you go out there to do the shoe boxes, it's not just the shoe boxes, it's everything else that goes with it. Mm -hmm. Well, we're talking about Croatia. I don't know country too well myself apart from what you're sharing but how has covid really affected the country has there been widespread vaccinating or not not widespread they have been vaccinating but i think it's difficult for for many countries that just can't get hold of the vaccines or they can't afford them i'm not not too sure how it goes out there but i do know that there's there's uh, I think in the whole of Croatia, I'm not sure how many people there are, but I think there's four or five million. But in, in certain areas where we work, like Slatina, for instance, there's a few thousand. But a lot of them have had COVID or have COVID. And they, you know, they don't have money where they can go out and, and go and enjoy a restaurant or something like that. But one thing that did hit me was the last Christmas, uh, before the last one that I went out there, 
it was an absolute ghost town and I've never known Croatia to be like that because people out there are they're magnets to each other they want to stand together with each other they want to talk they want to converse about their day about last week and they can drink a small cup of coffee while they do it that's their way of gathering and and passing their day and when you go into a place like that and then you see it's absolutely like a ghost town mm. it's, it's very strange and in fact I only spent four days there and I, I wanted to come home to distribute in the boxes. But it's it's it's, it's difficult for, for places like Croatia. Sure, when you compare with our affluent southeast area here, yeah, that's that's tough even listening to you speaking now. And I would guess just the data of, of goods from shops, the necessities, nothing much is available at the moment. Well, do you know what, Ray? We're, we're meant to be, I think, one of the seventh richest countries in the world. And here we are. We're, we're giving lateral flows out like there's, there's no tomorrow. And, OK, maybe that's the right thing to do. I don't know. But places like Croatia, if someone wants a lateral flow, say, say for, like, for instance, the Red Cross, they have to take tests for their workforce every two days he has 45 in his workforce and he has to pay one pound 80 per flow that they buy from the chemist they're not free mm -hmm. so you know how where do they get that money from and, and it's 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 so very difficult when you think and and places like the shops there are there is food in the shops you know if i was out there now i could go in the supermarket and get food but it, it's people just can't afford it they haven't got the money and you, you'll see some people that are driving these big cars out there pull up at the, the uh, supermarket put loads in their trolley and in their car and there but the normal village person you know she's out picking the vegetables off the field and putting them in the pot and cooking them and that, that makes a good meal and they're happy with that you know probably in the end a good diet and free from all the alien things that that we eat and supposedly enjoy over here which is not so good for health but there we are you, you've given us a lot of facts Mick uh, as you did before and appreciate all of that so if anybody tuning in uh, really wanted to to get in touch with you how could they do that well, they can either email me which yep. is livinglifeeastbourne at yahoo.co dot uk or they can ring me on my mobile which is 07508 934 046 and i'm on those numbers all the time so if anybody wants to send them an email i'm always checking my emails every half hour but we are we, we are desperate without without that building, i'm really fearful that we, we will get shoe boxes but we won't get the number that we need you know this was the throughout this charity that we're now running this the biggest amount of boxes we've had and our aim for this year is 2000 boxes because on the very first day of distribution which was that following monday we got in sunday um, from from the flights monday we went straight out we distributed 750 boxes to eight schools and just the tip of the the iceberg you know so uh, i want i want much more i want much more for these kids and if you see these kids bless them it, it tears it tears at your heart it does so do you have on your website do you have photographs yeah people can go to the website it's livinglifeeastbourne.org.uk we've actually just put our new newsletter on there which i finished um from the christmas run um, so that's a four page one they can go on there they can download leaflets uh, and they can download the shoebox leaflets whatever they want uh, there's everything on there that they need to know there you go well it's been brilliant talking to you uh, once again and so close to signing off but i just have to make an announcement so stay with me then i'll say goodbye at the end so once again Mick, thanks for listening or thanks for speaking to me answering my questions thanks for listening to the podcast my name is ray dadswell and this has been eastbourne dot online thanks to my team 
Chris Dabbs and the podcast studio for putting this podcast together. And don't forget, you can subscribe, listen again, or catch up with any of my previous interviews online on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or on your Alexa, or wherever you get your podcasts from. So thanks again, and see you soon.